Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I'm Harsham Ali Khan. Now I'm going to start chapter number six. So far, five chapters I've completed on the subject accounting for CA foundation. Now in this sixth chapter, I'm going to explain you about the accounting as a measurement discipline, then evaluation principles and accounting estimates. These three topics are there in this unit chapter number six. So before explaining further, take the screenshot of the points which I have written on the board, then I'll explain every point in detail. Now, the main topic is accounting as a measurement discipline. One of the first aspect of accounting is measurement. So a measurement is the vital aspect of accounting. In the definition itself, it comes measurement, measuring the events, measuring the transactions. That is the first aspect in accounting. So primarily, uh, transactions and events are measured in terms of money. So whatever transactions are taking place in the business, events are happening in the business those events and transactions are measured in terms of money then only it will be recorded so if we analyze the definition of accounting first comes identification of the transactions second measurement of transaction then comes recording so directly we cannot come, uh, come to recording first we have to identify then measure so primarily all the transactions and events will be measured in terms of money so any measurement discipline deals with three basic elements of measurement. So wherever we have to measure, three things we have to remember. What are the three things? First one, identification of objects and events to be measured. The first aspect in accounting is identifying what are the events, what are the transactions that is required to be measured. Without identifying how we can be able to record, how we can be able to measure, the first is identification of the events and transactions. Secondly, selection of a standard or scale to be used. We have different scales of measurement. Like some items are measured in terms of kilogram. Some items are measured in terms of liters. Some are measured in terms of meters. Like that, we have different scales or standard. The selection of standard, that is the second thing. The third is Evaluation of dimension of measurement standard or scale. Evaluation of the dimension of that standard or scale. So these three are the basic aspects of any measurement or discipline. Right? According to Professor R. J. Chambers defines measurement as one standard definition was given by author R. J. Chambers. He says measurement is an assignment of numbers to objects and events. Simply, measurement means assigning a number. That means one kilogram or one pound or uh, one meter or one liter. So first of all, we have to give a number, assign the number to the, to the events and objects according to the rules specifying the property to be measured. Because we have specific rules for measuring like liquid. The liquid is measured in liters. The cloth is measured in meters. Like that some commodities are measured in grams. Like that we have to find out which is the appropriate measure. Then specifying the property to measure, the scale to be used, which scale we are using and the dimension of that unit. This is the complete definition. In this definition, all the three ingredients are found. Now, objects are it. The first aspect in measurement discipline is identifying the objects and events to be measured right so accounting is the process here if we focus on the definition of accounting so accounting is the process of identifying measuring and communicating the economic information to permit informed judgment and decision by the users of the information nowadays a business organization has many users they have to form informed judgments in order to make informed judgments the events the transactions should be identified 
should be measured and should be communicated so that the users can be able to take prudent decisions, informed judgments they can make. That's why accounting is called the process. Then, so accounting essentially includes measurement information. That is the reason why measurement is very vital aspect in accounting. An accountant has to measure the events and transactions. So decision makers need past, present and future information. For external users, generally the past information is communicated. See here. We have internal users as well as external users. The internal users are uh, management and employees and the staff. These are the internal. So internal users normally require the past information, present information and future information. Whereas outside external users, they need normally the past information and the present information. Now there is no uniform set of events or transactions in accounting which are required for decision making. Every user wants different nature of uh, information. Example, the potential uh, owners or the potential investors. So before making the investment, they want to see the profitability, the financial position, stability, then the solvency. These are the things the potential investor will look. Whereas the supplier of funds like bankers, like creditors, they are interested in the liquidity of the business. So every decision maker requires different I mean, transactions different things are required there is no common transactions which are required by everybody the needs are different for example in cash management in case of cash management various cash receipts and expenses are necessary objects and events whereas if we want to see the cash management what is the liquidity position of the business then a person wants to see what are the uh, cash receipts and what are the cash payments then only they can be able to find out the liquidity position of the business then obviously the decision maker needs past cash receipts and expenses data along with projected receipts and payments just like a banker before extending the loan to the business the banker wants to find out the liquidity what is the cash position how much are the receipts and how much are the payments made by the business if the receipts and payments are stable that means receipts are more than the payments then the banker will see that the liquidity position is good so not only the present cash receipt and cash payment but also the projected cash receipts and cash payments are required then similarly for giving loan to a business one needs information regarding the repayment ability of the principal and interest normally a banker before extending the loan to the business the banker wants to find out what is the ability of the business whether the business can be able to repay the principal along with interest or not this is a requirement of banker. Similarly, the requirement of the supplier, the requirement about the owner. So different people needs different types of information. So all these information should be identified, should be measured and should be communicated. This also includes past information, current state of affairs as well as future projections. Nowadays, the decision maker does not require only the past information. It is not necessary that past will repeat again in the future also. So we need future projections. Then it may be mentioned that past and present objects can be measured with some degree of accuracy. The past information and the present information we can accurately measure. But regarding the future transactions, we can only estimate. There is no accuracy in the future estimations. Now, project, uh, product prediction is an essential part of accounting information nowadays. Nowadays, accounting does not deal only with the past and present. Accounting also requires the prediction about the future, projections about the future. That is the thing regarding identification of events and transactions which are to be measured. Secondly, standard or scale of measured. How to measure it? What is a standard or what is a scale of measurement? We, have, we can measure the items transaction in different ways. There are different scales available. But the most commonly used scale is money. 
all the transactions will be measured in terms of money. Example, salary paid will be money. Wages paid, rent paid, electricity bill, telephone bill, purchases are made, sales are conducted. All these are in terms of money only. So the standard of measurement is money. So in accounting, money is the scale of measurement. Money as a measurement scale has no universal denomination. It takes the shape of the currency ruling in the country. First of all, when transactions are measured in terms of money, it does not have universal applicability. Because the measurement is done in terms of money and the money will be different in different countries. Like in India, the money will be measured in terms of rupee. In US, it will be uh, I mean, measured in terms of US dollar. Similarly, in Germany, it will be measured in terms of Deutschmark. In UK, it will be measured in pound sterling. So every country will have their own currency. That is money. So it does not have universal applicability. And also there is no constant exchange rate. Because different countries are using different money currencies. In that case, we cannot exchange easily. The relationship, that is exchange rate, will fluctuate. For example, the exchange rate between Indian rupee and US dollar, it fluctuates day by day. So the value will not remain constant. The value will change because the money is the money, money value is changing. So money as a unit of measurement lacks universal applicability across the boundary of a country unless there is a common currency used in the countries. Very few places we have common country used. For example, Euro. Euro is commonly used in some European countries. So it's a common currency. So there is universal applicability. Whereas other countries, it lacks uniformity. So there is a lot of problem in exchanging the value from one currency to another currency. Now since the rate of exchange fluctuates between two countries over the time, money as a measure also becomes volatile. See here, the value of money is changing. So what will happen? When the exchange rate changes, then definitely the value of goods and services, the value of the transactions will also change. For example, we purchase goods from America. We have to make the payment in dollars. So we have to convert our Indian rupees into dollars. But as the time passes every day, the exchange rate will change. When exchange rate changes, then definitely our obligation to make the payment will also change. That's why the value of goods and services will change. It's completely volatile due to the change in the exchange rate. Now last topic is dimension of measurement scale. Dimension. Dimension of measurement of scale means whether the scale remains constant or not. So an ideal measurement of scale should be stable over time. That means from time to time, the scale, the standard of scale should be same. It should not change. So for example, if one kilogram, if one buys one kilogram of cabbage today, the quantity he receives will be same if he buys one kilogram cabbage one year later. One kilogram is one kilogram. Whether you buy one kilogram cabbage today or one kilogram cabbage after one year, the one kilogram will remain same. The quantity will not change. That means the standard which is used is kilogram. And this kilogram is remaining same. Right? From time to time. Whereas similarly the length of one meter of cloth will not change if it bought a few days later. Similar one more example. One meter of cloth. If you buy one meter of cloth now or if you buy, buy one meter of cloth after a period of time, the one meter will remain same. That means the unit dimension will not change. But that is to say a measurement of scale should be stable in dimension. One of the requirement of measurement is the measurement dimension should not change from time to time. But unfortunately, money as a scale of measurement is not stable. Most of the things are measured in terms of money, but money itself is not stable. The purchasing power of money is changing from time to time due to inflation, due to a number of factors. That means the money which is used to measure the transaction, the money itself is not stable. That means the value will get changed. Value depends on money, but money itself is unstable. 
the same quantity of money may not have the ability to buy the same quantity of identical goods at different dates. The purchasing power of money will change. For example, presently, the uh, price, the cost of one kilogram rice today is suppose 55. If you purchase the same one kilogram of rice after a period of suppose a two years or three years, the price may go up to 75 rupees. That means the same quantity of rice if we purchase right now it is 55. After a period of two years it will become becoming 75. Then we can say the value of money is not stable. The dimension unit is not stable. The purchasing power of money is changing. Thus information of one year measured in terms of money may not be comparable with that of another year. That's the main drawback of measuring the transaction and events in terms of money. Because money itself is unstable but in measurement in accounting what we'll do the values which are purchased in the last two, two three years will add up for example a machine is purchased 10 years back and the machine is purchased now both the machines we add up together but it's wrong because the value of money 10 years back and the value of money today is different purchasing power is different so it is not correct to add up the value but still we add up in spite that the money have its own limitation. The value is changing, but still we add up. The money as a unit of measurement is not stable in dimension. Thus, accounting measures information mostly in money terms, which is not stable. Scale having universal applicability and also not stable in dimension for comparison over time. We can we measure all the transactions and events in terms of money, but money itself is unstable. Money is not universally applicable and the value of money will change from time to time. That is a drawback. But still, there is no way out to overcome this. Still, we measure the transactions and events in terms of money only. So in this video, I have explained you about accounting as a measurement discipline. What is measurement? I have explained the four, I mean, uh, definition, one, one of the definition given by author R.J. Chambers and also the three aspects of measurement I have explained. So this topic is important from theoretical point of view, which may be asked in examination. So inshallah, we'll continue our discussion on this chapter in the next video.